What's happening guys? Today I'm going to be sharing how I set up my Wacom tablet and optimized it for Photoshop and how I use it every day for all of my editing and Photoshop purposes. So let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about a long requested tutorial all about my Wacom tablet and how I set it up for Photoshop. Now if you guys aren't familiar with a Wacom tablet, basically what this thing does is it replaces your mouse so then you can do really fine adjustments with a pen. With a pen. Basically you can draw all over this thing and it replaces your mouse and you can do way finer adjustments with all of the tools in Photoshop. If you're serious about editing, I seriously recommend buying one of these things, you will never ever regret it. And with that, let's hop over to the computer so we can figure out how to set this guy up for Photoshop and all the cool shortcuts that can go along with it. So to start changing the settings on our tablet, we have to go into our Wacom desktop manager. So I'm just gonna go to my launch pad and find my Wacom desktop center manager, whatever it's called. Now you have this little window here you just want to make sure that you go to my devices select the device that you're using so in this case I have the Intuos Pro S and now I can go in and access all of the settings for my tablet so the first thing that I highly recommend doing is the orientation settings so if I click on my orientation settings our window comes up here and what you'll notice right away is I have this little box that is mapped to my entire screen. So essentially, if we're looking at our tablet right now, about this large of an area is mapped to my entire screen. So if I go ahead and I grab my pen, and now if I go up to this corner of my tablet, you'll notice that my mouse is now in the corner of my screen. And now I can go down to just about the middle of my tablet and you now see that my mouse is hanging out over here. So basically what I've done is I've mapped my entire screen to a smaller area on my tablet so I don't have to move my hand way down here, way up here, all over the place and end up having like a sore arm or something like that. So instead, all I have to do is pretty much do a little bit of wrist movement and I can go all the way around my screen. So that is a really big thing that I recommend doing. So to do that, what you can do is just change your screen, make sure your screen area is set to full and then your tablet area, which is basically the effective area on your tablet that you're gonna be using, make sure you set it to portion. When you click portion, an area will come up and you can go ahead and you can move this box wherever you want. So right now that will map to my, basically corner to corner on my tablet will be corner to corner on my screen. And so since I don't want that, I'm gonna be somewhere back in here, like I said before. And so once you have the area that you're happy with, you can just go ahead and click okay. Next thing is depending on how you want to situate your entire tablet, I like to have my hotkeys here down on the left side of me. So I'm gonna make sure that my orientation here is set to or express keys left instead of something over here because otherwise if I have it set to like express keys top, it's going to assume that I have my tablet situated like this. So everything will be adjusted accordingly. Just so you guys are aware of that, you don't wanna end up being confused of why left isn't left and right isn't right, you know what I mean? So now going over here to my pen, this is another area that is a pretty important area in getting the most out of your tablet, in my opinion at least. So for the tip feel, that's basically how much pressure can I apply onto my tablet for it to be like full pressure, like 100% opacity versus just like to register as a click or just like a very light brush stroke in Photoshop. So as you see, if I'm just pressed down on my tablet, you can see the pressure sensor here going up. Now I can adjust this tip feel as much as I want. So if I go really firm, now I have to press really, really hard, probably about twice as hard now to get it to maximum versus right in the middle. I like to just have a nice little gentle touch to it. So I set mine right in the middle of my tip feel here. So it's kind of a nice happy medium, but again, that's totally up to you guys. Now the tilt sensitivity is basically like the orientation of your pen. So right now my pen is straight up and down. Now if I tilt it to the side or down or wherever I wanna go here, that's going to, depending on your sensitivity, just having those little minute changes is going to make a difference if you have it up at really high here. What I recommend is if you're doing basic Photoshop stuff, just keep it at normal. But if you're doing sort of like painting or digital drawing, that kind of thing, having a high tilt sensitivity would definitely make a difference for you. Moving on to the buttons on our pen. As you'll be able to see here is there's two buttons on the pen. So 
there's a top button and then a bottom button right there. So as you'll see is I have my bottom button set to right click and my top button set to the keystroke of undo in Photoshop. If you want to change any of these things, you can just go into here and you, there's a whole bunch of different options you have. It's pretty endless and actually almost a little bit overwhelming with all the options that you have here. But for me, I think having a right click is really useful. So then I never have to go to my mouse. I can literally just hover over something and I can right click on whatever I need just with my pen. Same thing with the undo. The undo shortcut is probably one of the biggest things I use in Photoshop all of the time. So instead of having to go ahead and press my keyboard all the time to keep undoing things, I can just press one button on my pen and it does all of that for me. It's just a lot easier, it's a lot faster. To set your keystrokes, you can just go in here, make sure you click on keystroke, and then all you have to do is type in the exact shortcut for your specific needs. So in this case, as you see, I have Alt, Command, and Z. Now I'm just gonna exit out of this and let's start going into Express Key Settings. Now we're looking at all of these keys on the side here. So now one thing that I should mention is here in my Applications window, right now these are my basic and general settings for basically all of my apps. Now if I go over here and click on my Photoshop app, if you don't already see this, you can just go here and click the plus and then select whatever app you're wanting to use. But since mine's already here, I'm just clicking on the Photoshop app. And now, as you see, I have my keystroke set a little bit differently. Now, this button down here is my space bar to move everything around as I need. Then if I go up to this next button here, you see I have it set to new layer. So when I go ahead and just click this button in Photoshop, it will create a new layer for me. And then likewise, this one just above, I can press that button and it, I have it set to Command T, which is transform in Photoshop on a Mac. And so then I can go and do any of those good adjustments there. So just to set those things, Again, I just go to keystroke, and then of course it would be blank when you first use it, and I just go command and T, and then it pops up in there, and I'll just click OK. Now, now just as another safety, I have another step backwards here, which is the same as the undo on my pen here, and then I, the, the settings for my, the settings and my touch on and off for the top two buttons here do not change. Now going over to my touch ring, there's a little light on different areas, and if I click it, you'll see that it goes to a different use so right now the first one is scroll and zoom so if i am going around this it will zoom in or out now the next one is cycle layers so now if i'm in photoshop i can go through all of my layers and select the one i want just by spinning around on my radial menu here next is my brush size so as you'll see if i just move this one side to the other it changes the size of my brush within photoshop just like that, it's really easy. Then I don't have to click any extra buttons. I can just use the radial menu. My last setting is rotate, which I don't actually use all that much, but I like to have the option there for myself. So that is exactly how I set up my Wacom tablet and how I feel is a really useful way to set your tablet up for Photoshop and photo editing, digital art, that kind of thing. Now, as you notice, there's a ton of different shortcuts that we can apply and the ways that you can go about this is pretty much universal. You can apply any shortcut to any button and really customize it for your own workflow. But what I talked about in the video today is just what works for me and how I like to go about things. If you want to see a little bit more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram at burnwills and check out my blog at bewillcreative.com. Again, my name is Brendan and I'll catch you back here next week.